and Iran indeed with the boss of France's biggest oil company Total has halted buying oil from Iran in line with those EU sanctions but in turning off the tap the French oil giant has cast doubts over that ban suggesting that the oil will perhaps just go someplace else Total CEO Christophe de Margerie joins me now so good morning. good morning so talk to me a little bit about the impact of the EU trade embargo on Iranian crude on oil trading and indeed your supplies well, uh, facts are facts. When you look at the screen, you see that the Brent price has not moved. It's a little bit lower than what it was before the additional embargo. So the thing is not to say, I mean, is it working or not working? Yeah. Is being in charge of an oil company and, and willing to say what is important to say, I mean, what would be the impact on the market, which means on our clients? Well, it's true that today we don't see any negative impact. But the Which ban doesn't good. come into force until July. Yeah, but I mean, there is there's been embargo on Iran for for many many months, and uh, I deeply think it has been working. But here on that one, being oil, it's true that now European companies like Total, we, we cannot buy any more crude from Iran. We stopped it, and we stopped it even before. But in terms of access to oil for the market, Iran has other options, other clients than Europe. So, well, that, so yeah. that's why that's why I mean it has had a limited impact on on the price of uh, of oil. But what about the European refiners? Can they cope without Iranian crude? I suppose the fact that it doesn't come into force yet gives gives you time to secure alternative supplies. We do. I mean, you know, the good thing with oil, it's it's uh, probably the most flexible commodity, which means there is, there is one price for almost everybody, and 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 you can find oil of different quality. It's true that short term, the fact that we have no more access to this specific crude is having a, an impact on our refining margin. But it's limited. It's technical. In terms of macroeconomy, mm -hmm. the crude is there. There is enough supply. It was already a little bit uh, oversupplied. So, so the impact is not, is, not, is not important. But I think it's good news. I mean, uh, mm. I don't want to say that, you know, Total is, is saying that the embargo is not working. Total yeah. is happy to see that this time the price of oil is not going to the sky and then yeah. everybody will tell us, what are you doing? So, I mean, what we're doing is making sure that our refineries are well supplied and today the impact is really, frankly, Limited. You know, I was just talking. Which is good news. It's good news. Uh, let me ask about your broader outlook for commodities, because I was just speaking with Cynthia Carroll of Anglo American, and she was saying uh, she's not concerned about the impact of a double dip, but she does expect to see a slowdown in the first half of this year. Uh, would you share that opinion when it comes to oil prices? Well, oil, oil prices are not only depending of offer and demand. It's uh, a commodity. It's uh, sometimes used by investors as a way to compensate inflation or when they don't know where to invest, they might invest in oil because they consider that the oil price will remain high in the long run because the fundamentals are more in favor of uh, a price of oil going higher than lower. So if you don't know what to do, you don't sell. And, and to, to see a lower price of oil, what I mean lower, I mean below 100, today it's 110, you really would need to have a real recession. And I don't think we will get a real recession, and I hope we won't. So, I mean, I think it's more important to consider that it will not be a recession just to have the price of oil gain, going lower. Mm. So today, yes, the price of oil should be lower. At the same time, we see each time it goes close to 100, yeah. it, it's rebounding. Why? Because people don't take the risk. And so is, that, is that the sense that you're getting from many of the investors that you're speaking to here at the World Economic Forum? Is, is oil seen as something of an attractive commodity or, to invest in? It's, it's more, no, I mean, we, we, first, I mean, I don't consider the, the oil as an investment. I mm. mean, uh, oil for us is our business. Yes, yes. You know, we, 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 we look for oil, we, we transform speaking, the oil. You, you, you were speaking there about investors perhaps using it as a way to combat True. inflation and because of, you know, the, where the macroeconomic True. fundamentals are right now. But, but I, I, I prefer that they don't too much interfere in our market. I see. So, so that it's really working with offer and demand. But it's not the case. But when we talk, I mean, I much more talk on what should we do to bring more energy to our clients? What should we do to make it cleaner? and more acceptable, mm -hmm. that is my 
my job. And is that the big demand from your clients right now, that they want companies like yours to go one step further, that they are paying more attention to these I environmental issues, yes. if you like? Yes. Yeah. And, and, and I, I, I deeply think it's a good, uh, it's a good thing. Is that going to cost you, though? Well, yes and no. I mean, yes, but no, because, I mean, we need to hear what we are told. And what we are told is we want you to be cleaner. We want you to take, pay more attention to the environment. I deeply think we are, but, I mean, we can do more. So could you yeah, tell me about that? What well, more I mean, could you be doing? Well, for instance, I mean, energy is a mix. It's not only oil and gas and coal and nuclear and renewables, mm. it's everything. And I think it's very important today to tell people, don't just look at oil or only to nuclear or only to gas, look at everything and see what is available and at what price and how you have to make it cleaner. For oil, it's obvious, oil and gas, those are fossil energies, so carbon content is high. And we have to reduce the carbon content not in the oil, in the way it is used by our clients. So we need to make it more efficient to reduce the consumption of our clients. Doesn't mean that they have to drive less, that's their decision. But we have mm. to find a way, which we are doing, to reduce the consumption per car, per client. Mm. And also, as far as we are a big company, also thinking of what we can do with the CO2 as far as at the end, it will remain always CO2, as far as you are using carbon. And on the top, which is new, and especially for Total, we have been now involved in renewables and in particularly in solar. And what about other opportunities that you might be uh, opportunities that you might be on the lookout for? I know that you have expressed an interest. Well, actually, you, you've you've gone further than that. You've actually been buying up U.S. shale gas permits in the U.S. Is that is that you going to continue investing in that space? Well, you know, we we are not looking to to shale gas. We're looking for gas. Yeah. The gas is shale gas is, let's call it classical gas, whatever. But gas is cleaner than oil. And it's today much more needed than oil, especially for everything which is linked with electricity and power plant. So the option today, the opportunity is with shale gas. So we go for it, but not because it's shale gas, because it's gas. And then we will do everything to make it acceptable. There is this debate about shale gas, about is it clean or not, what are you doing with, with fracking. It's very important that we send the message that first, we are considering this seriously, and second, we will show it and be transparent in terms of what it means on the environment. Well, thank you very much indeed. Really good to get your thoughts. Christophe de Marjorie, Total CEO, Europe's third largest oil company.